Alrighty, everybody. Good morning again. Mentor Fest 2021 underway here. We are ready to jump into our next session here. Uh, so for those of you like me who have been going, you know, someday I would like to learn Morse code and, and get into that side of the amateur radio hobby. This session's for you. We've got learning and enjoying CW with Eric, November Mike, five Mike, uh, with our next presentation. And if you have questions, uh, feel free to have them ready to go. We'll take questions towards the end of the session. Of course, we'll have the door prize uh, in just a bit. Uh, but for the moment, Eric, I'm gonna send it right over to you. Good morning. Good morning. Very good. Well, yes, today we're gonna talk about learning CW and uh, some of the uh, avenues that one may take in order to, uh, in order to learn the code. And um, a little bit about myself. My name is Eric Silverthorne. My call is NM5M, and I live in Plano, Texas. Uh, I've been a ham for 44 years, and uh, I've been an avid CW operator along the whole way, um, and uh, and continue to enjoy CW. I started teaching uh, CW classes um, about uh, about six years ago in the CW Academy, and since uh, starting to do that, I uh, have led. 12, 12 different uh, uh, groups and classes um, in the various semesters of CW Academy. Um, you know, CW plays a, a, an enormous role in the history of amateur radio. And um, uh, in the early 1900s, of course, it was really the only mode of communication in amateur radio in the spark days. And, um, and even when, uh, when continuous wave became uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, typical mode of operation uh, in amateur radio. Um, certainly throughout the war years, um, there was more use of uh, a phone, of AM phone, and then the 50s single sideband, but, um, but CW has persevered and uh, continues, uh, continues to be very popular. Um, and once in a while, I do hear the question, you know, do, do folks still do CW? And, um, you know, why would you, why would you choose to do uh, you know, m maybe what could be perceived as being an archaic or antique mode. Well, there's an example that I'd like to share just with regard to field day participation this last year. And so, as you can see, there were 820,000 CW QSOs which were made uh, in that uh, in that weekend during field day um, in comparison to uh, 661,000 phone QSOs. The mode itself, it's, it is very, very popular. Um, you can tune in on any contest weekend uh, on, on the bands during, uh, uh, during CW contest and certainly hear significant activity. Of course, any, just about any evening of the week when you tune around, there's, uh, there's also plenty of CW signals to be found uh, on the bands. So you've, uh, if you've decided that you want to learn Morse code, a lot of times people have, uh, have questions on uh, where to start and how to go about uh, learning the code. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So the fortunate thing is that there are a number of avenues that one can take in order to learn Morse. Um, CW Op, CW Academy um, has been around uh, for about 10 years now, and it's been very successful in, um, in, uh, in providing uh, method, a, me a method and a <clears throat> setting uh, for folks to, to learn CW. Uh, Long Island CW Club has is, uh, is, uh, been around for the last few years, and it also provides um, a method for uh, people to join, and, um, and it provides instruction. Of course, a lot of folks might choose to do it on, on their own, um, or perhaps even you belong to a local club uh, that provides CW classes to uh, its membership. So the good news is, is that there's, there's avenues um, of, of which one can take in order to learn Morse. And, um, and whether you choose to do it on your own, at your own pace, using your own method, uh, through the club or through one of these organizations like CW Ops or Long Island CW Club, um, you, can, um, uh, you, can, you can find a path. I will say this, my observation has been that by virtue of doing it through a club or an organization setting uh, like CW Ops or Long Island CW, I think people have a better uh, a tendency to better um, position themselves for success. And partially because in these classes, um, uh, the, there, there is a, 
motivation amongst uh, classmates to prepare and to study. Um, there's a curriculum, a, for, a formal curriculum that's, uh, that's been put together. And in the case of CW Ops in particular, I can attest to the fact that that curriculum is, uh, it's very, very successful. Um, roughly 80% of the people who um, start a CW Ops course finish. And uh, we'll talk about uh, the CW Ops uh, organization and process um, in, uh, in greater depth in the, in the upcoming slides. Um, CW Academy, uh, it was created by an organization called CW Ops, which has about, uh, about 2,800 members, maybe, maybe even a little bit more now. Um, the CW Academy has 80 volunteer advisors, and advisor, advisors could be um, compared to instructors. Um, they call them advisors because uh, they're really more uh, in position to lead the class. Uh, individuals really learn on their own but they're uh, kind of nav uh, provided navigation and push through the uh, process of learning CW by these volunteer advisors. There's more than uh, 5,000 students have completed the course since 2015. And uh, this last semester, uh, as I recall, there were more than 400 graduates uh, from CW uh, Academy in the winter session. Um, and I think by and large, um, um, about 600 students uh, enter in a given semester and about uh, about 400 of those complete uh, the curriculum for the uh, course that they've entered. Um, in CW Academy, there's four levels of training. It starts with beginner. Uh, the next one is basic, intermediate, and advanced. And as you would expect, um, each of those levels of training have different, um, uh, they have different uh, starting points and uh, end goals. One thing to also mention about CW Academy is that the classes are free. Um, there's no charge in CW Academy. In, a, in a, a few slides from now, we'll talk about the other, uh, some of the other organizations and, and, um, and what their process is. So to get started in CW Academy, there are a few things that you need to have. So classes are conducted online uh, and typically they're conducted using Skype or Zoom, sometimes Jitsi, online, um, online video conferencing platforms. And so students who participate, they need a keyer paddle. It can be iambic, it can be a single lever paddle. They need a transceiver or a keyer, um, the, uh, the, 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 or the, you know, in the keyer, the, the box that makes the dits and does as you move the, the uh, paddle to the left or to the right. Uh, you need a, a computer, of course, in order to join the online session. You'll need a webcam and a microphone, and you need good internet access. And the reason for the webcam is it's, as an instructor, it's very easy to, when you're observing the students as, uh, as uh, you're doing a practice session online, um, it's very easy to observe among those students when they're having a difficult time or when they're having success. And so, uh, the visual interaction is, is uh, a very important part of uh, the experience in CW Academy. CW Academy has a very specific teaching method um, that, they, that they employ. Uh, it's somewhat uh, unique, I suspect, um, in that uh, they emphasize something called instant character recognition. So an advisor leads the class, and the classes emphasize sending as well as receiving um, the characters. The letters are introduced in each session, and there are two sessions each week for, for a period of eight weeks, so 16 overall sessions. The letters are introduced uh, in the frequency that they're used in the English language, so letters that are used more often come first, and the letters that are used less often, uh, less, less often uh, come at the end. Um, and of course, when I'm saying letters, I'm really meaning characters. So that's letters A through Z, numbers zero through nine, and then uh, common punctuation like period, comma, question mark, um, that sort of thing. Uh, instant character recognition is really emphasized. And so what that means is um, in instant character recognition, when you hear a character, you want to be able to immediately uh, 
uh, comprehend or or um, or decode that character. So um, the sound of an A is sent, and you immediately recognize it as an A. And so you don't stumble around in the process of um, you know sounding it out in your head and and that sort of thing. And so it's specifically learning uh, learning Morse by sound, and we don't use. Uh, visual representations, um, you, you know, you may throughout the years, maybe you tried to learn Morse code and you had a cheat sheet that uh, had dots and dashes uh, written on it, or there was a, a, tr a training method that came out where they tried to use um, sound, uh, word sounds as a mechanism of, um, of comparing that to the Morse letter that was being sent. And those really introduce very unnecessary steps in the learning process. And so by virtue of breaking down the characters, introducing them uh, at each session, and like I said, there's two sessions each week, by virtue of doing that, they found that to be a very effective way of getting people to uh, learn code. And I, you know, I'll say in my classes, I've had students um, in their late teens and I've had students in their late seventies and, um, and there's just been a, a common observation of success amongst anyone who can put the time in, in order to practice and study and who uh, individuals that are really motivated for success um, by virtue of the teaching methods that are presented in CW Academy, there's a, there's a extraordinary chance for success for those who are participating. Uh, we'll start with the beginner session uh, in terms of uh, in terms of where one starts. And so in beginner, um, most often it's uh, from students who maybe they've tried to learn code on their own a few times. Maybe they learned code 20 years ago and they never really used it. Um, so the assumption is, is that you have no previous experience or, and you have no proficiency in Morse. Um, and if you learned it in a way that uh, perhaps uh, uh, Put you in a place where there were roadblocks at various speed levels. Um, it's it's it, it 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 would be good a good idea to start in beginner, and on the CW Academy website, which later on there, I share the uh, URL for that. There's some assessment tests to uh, where students can listen to various um, code groups, and they can make a determination of which of the four uh, courses. Um, they would best fall into. But starting out as beginner, and uh, like I said, if you learn CW a long time ago, but you feel you're very rusty, or if your code speed is under about 10 to 12 words per minute, beginner is really a good place to start. Um, in the beginner class, students are given a handbook. It's also called a PIHA. And this handbook is really the roadmap and uh, breaks down each session of the 16 sessions um, of the letters that are to be studied for that week or, or for, uh, for that particular session. And, um, and it, gives, uh, it gives students uh, the outline and course materials that they need for their practice. We do use an online program, which has been customized for CW Academy. It's called Morse Code Trainer. And um, it's, uh, it's online. You can, um, you can search Morse Code Trainer. It's, uh, it's made by, uh, it was uh, developed by Stephen Phillips, who uh, uh, oddly enough isn't a ham, but uh, had a real interest in building, um, uh, in building a Morse Code training platform. It's free for use and free for download. You actually don't have to join CW Academy in order to obtain the handbook that's also available on the CW Academy website. And, um, and, uh, and there's also instructions on how to use Morse Code Trainer, um, although it's very intuitive. So you can go online and you can download the Morse Code Trainer program and, um, and, uh, and begin your practice uh, from session one. Uh, in the beginner courses, students are able to get on the air as, as early as five weeks into the eight week course. After session 10, once we complete session 10, a student has learned all the characters and numbers and punctuation. And um, during the classes, instructors, uh, the advisor um, uh, generally provides 
uh, information on QSO format and protocol and so forth. And students are encouraged to get on the air and make their first contacts, uh, albeit slowly. Uh, the, uh, the, the expectations for success in the course is you have to attend the courses. You have to be able to free up the time in order to be able to attend each session. There's two each week, as I mentioned. Um, the session days vary by virtue of the advisor schedule and then the student's desire. Uh, so oftentimes the schedule is maybe Monday evening and Thursday evening or um, or Tuesday and Saturday or uh, Sunday and, and Thursday, that sort of thing. So um, there's a attempt when students are signing up to join the CW Academy to match them with advisors that offer and can accommodate their schedules. You, you have to be able to practice at a minimum of 45 minutes to an hour each day. And that practice encompasses both sending and receiving. And um, as I mentioned earlier, following the curriculum in the handbook uh, and, and working towards mastery of the letters that are introduced for a particular session. At the end of the course, uh, the, you know, the goal is that students are, have learned all the letters, numbers, punctuation, and prosign, uh, prosigns that are available. Uh, and and prosigns are sort of a shorthand, an abbreviation for, for various uh, information that you're sending uh, during a contact on CW. And the ability to, uh, to instantly recognize um, letters, numbers, and punctuation in the, um, in the alphabet. And of course, as I'd mentioned, the uh, guidance along the way of how uh, to get on and make a QSO. Um, at the end of the day, uh, there's no use learning more if you don't plan on getting on the air and using it. Uh, I think you wanted to break here, Aaron. Is that correct? It sure is. And thank you much. It's, it's time for our next door prize. So again, those joining the uh, not familiar with how the door prizes work for this virtual session, we have a link in the YouTube description uh, below where there's an entry form. And to help make sure folks are attending the session, uh, we have a keyword that we need you to enter when you're filling out the, the form. And so the keyword for this session is CW Ops. And I have just now opened up the form uh, to accept entries. We'll leave that open for the next 10 minutes. Make sure you put CW Ops in the keyword field to show that you're attending the session. And uh, after 10 minutes, we'll close the form. And at the end, we will uh, select the door prize winner. Thanks much, Eric, back to you. Excellent, uh, thank you, Aaron. So we'll talk about the Long Island CW Club. Um, it's, uh, it's been around for a few years. It's been very, very successful. And um, they offer a lot to those who want to learn CW and for those who are enthusiastic about CW. Um, the uh, uh, learning method is somewhat similar, except it is a bit more relaxed with regard to um, the requirement to attend specifically scheduled classes. So they offer, um, as, uh, as indicated here, they offer more than 66 classes a week um, uh, for adults and as many as nine a week uh, for uh, kids under 18. And those classes are um, somewhat uh, loose in attendance requirement in that if you're looking for a much more flexible um, met methodology uh, for attending classes, you can uh, join as many or as few classes as you want. You're really learning on your own and uh, but the classes themselves become as much of a support group as anything else. Um, there, um, they also, uh, it is not free, Long Island CW Club. In, in that organization, you join the, or, the organization. If you go to their website, uh, you can get details on what the costs are annually in order to participate. Uh, you can, uh, much like CW Ops, they not only offer classes for beginners, but they offer classes for um, for people who have uh, learned the Morse code, but they want to improve their proficiency and, um, and participate in uh, classes uh, also as they grow in proficiency. And I, I, as I recall, uh, Long Island CW also has classes that, um, that go well above 30 words per minute for those that are 
uh, speed demons uh, in, uh, in copying Morse. I'm often asked if there's a secret to success in learning CW, and it's really a, a very common theme, and it's something that I've talked about repeatedly, is that you really have to be in a position to focus and practice in order to have success in learning CW. Uh, with CW Academy, if you can dedicate the practice time that's needed in order to have success in the course, um, then you know you have a very good chance of, of getting through the course and being ready for the next level. After beginner in CW Academy, there's uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, basic level, which is the second level, intermediate, the third level, and the fourth level is advanced. Oftentimes, students who get through the advanced level qualify in code speed for membership in the CW Ops organization, which is around 25 words per minute and, and being, able to, um, uh, being able to converse in CW on the air at 25 words per minute. And the CW Ops website, there's also lots of information that's available on how to join the CW Ops organization, um, how to go about joining, and certainly um, the CW Academy information that's available um, can also give you more insight uh, as to um, as to how how to go about uh, becoming a part of the CW Academy class, and um, and also uh, measures of success once you. Uh, once you have entered that class. Um, there are some common things to avoid. And like, like I had mentioned before, learning CW by sight um, is, um, it's really problematic in the learning process because over time, in order to increase your speed, you have to then learn not to do that. So not referring to a cheat sheet, not referring to a decoder, um, not, uh, not referring to musical aids that might uh, that some might use in order to remember characters. It's really important to focus on learning CW by sound, and um, and by virtue of doing that, trying to um, demodulate that with your brain uh, as quickly as possible. And you capture the letter uh, and and the various letters, and you put words together. Um, Head copy is emphasized in CW Academy and getting to a point when uh, a student can um, completely copy what's being sent in their head. Again, it avoids a step by virtue of not writing things down. In that process, students naturally tend to learn uh, word groups um, by sound. And that also really helps and uh, it contributes to uh, the students being able to uh, increase their speed um, through, throughout the program. I'm currently working with a group of students um, that I've uh, that I've had for uh, uh, about the last year. We've been working since October. When we started working in October, their code speed was about 23 word per minute character speed and about uh, 10 word per minute Farnsworth. And Farnsworth is the spacing um, it's, if you put extra spacing between the characters, then you can lower the effective speed, even though the character speed is high. And uh, these students are now easily copying call signs at, at about 23 words per minute. Um, and they're doing so because they're putting in the time in order to, um, in, to, in order to master that craft. Um, here's some common resources that are available. Uh, Morse Code Trainer by uh, Stephen Phillips. It's under a URL, uh, which is Morse Code World. Uh, Morse Ninja is, uh, is very popular. Um, G4FON is uh, a software that's uh, very popular. And LCWO, uh, Learn CW Online. There's, there are many others. There are a ton of apps out there. There are a lot of platforms that are very good. But uh, if you were to concentrate on these four, uh, these would definitely be good. Uh, places uh, as starting points, particularly Morse Code Trainer and uh, G4FON and LCWO. I think Morse Ninja would be more suited to once you had learned the code uh, in, and uh, it's a methodology of, uh, of really getting your code speed up, uh, getting it higher, and it's, it's a great exercise tool. If you're looking for more information on CW Academy and Long Island CW Club, here are a couple of URLs that you can follow, um, and uh, it'll uh, 
it'll get you to a place that has the information that you need on those organizations. Both of them are fine, uh, fine organizations. I, I am an advisor in CW Academy, and uh, I'm also a member of CW Ops, um, and uh, and uh, can certainly attest to the success of the CW Academy methodology and and um, and how they go about uh, not only teaching code to beginners, but then the process of moving through the various courses and the ultimate goal of uh, of uh, attendees in the CW Academy becoming members of CW Ops. Um, the Long Island CW Club, it's a, it's a fine club, has well over 1,000 members, I think 1,300 members now, um, and they do an excellent job of providing daily resource for those who have an interest in Morse code. Uh, if you want to sign up for CW Academy, the next course starts in September. <clears throat> in September, there are three semesters a year in CW Academy, and um, the next course starts in, in uh, September. It's a good idea if you have an interest to sign up now. And I, I would even say sign up now if you think there's a good chance that you might get in. You can always defer to a later semester uh, if for some reason uh, you can't get going in the, in the September class. So here's the URL to sign up for CW Academy. The three semesters are um, in the fall, the winter, uh, the fall session starts in September. The winter session starts in January, and then um, in the in April timeframe is when the spring session uh, begins. There is no um, there is no CW Academy uh, offering during the summer months. And so now we're ready for some questions. Uh, I appreciate uh, everybody listening in, and uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments about what we've talked about. All righty, Eric, excellent. Thank you much and um, appreciate the details on CW. And we've had some comments in the chat of folks that have signed up and are, are, are wishing there was a sooner one, but they understand. And so they're, ex they're excited to catch the next one in, in September. There was a question, and I think he answered it already, was uh, how does one find the day of the week that the next courses will be held uh, before signing up? And I believe you just mentioned the schedules up on on the web page uh, that you had the link to, and that's, that's the place correct. to go find out. Yeah, and they can go to the CW Academy um, sign up page, and there's in, uh, there's uh, information on the upcoming sessions. All right, excellent. Well, we don't have any other questions in the chat just yet. If um, if you do have questions, uh, please put them into the chat. I'll get them relayed to, to Eric here. Um, I'll also quickly mention that. Um, just now, the 10-minute timer ran, so no longer accepting entries into the uh, door prize. And uh, a quick reminder that um, we do have some eligibility requirements uh, that are listed on the, on the entry form. Uh, and I'll just quickly mention them, uh, that you need to be within the continental United States to enter, and presenters and ARRL North Texas leadership are ineligible to enter. And so for this... Um, round of door prize selection, we will be picking from a random number between four and 35. All right, question that's come in. What's the difference between, oh, I'm not going to know how to pronounce this, I-A-M-B-I-C, is it iambic? What's the difference yes. between iambic and single paddle, and why is either preferred? So, <clears throat> um, so iambic keying was something that came around uh, in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. And um, essentially, iambic keying is when um, is when you use two paddles. Um, when you have two paddles, one side sends da's, the other side the other side when depressed uh, sends dits. Um, a single lever paddle, when you press the paddle itself in one direction, the single paddle in one direction, it produces da's, and the other uh, side produces dits. And so um, there's, a, there's a methodology which is uh, referred to as squeeze keying, and it's a mechanism by virtue of squeezing the paddle instead of, um, instead of only going left or right, um, that you can reduce the hand movements that are needed in order to send code. And there's a uh, there's an ideology that, uh, that by doing so, perhaps it creates less fatigue. 
some chips were introduced in the 70s, the Curtis uh, Keir chips, some might remember. And so they produced uh, what they call iambic A and iambic B. And by virtue of, um, by virtue of uh, the various timing of the elements in something which they called uh, memory, dash memory, uh, didn't da memory. So imagine that if you squeeze the paddle, it sends did da did da did da did da did da. Well, in order to do that um, with a single lever paddle, you would have to move your paddle three or four times in order to do that. And so, by virtue of that motion, uh, the the idea at the time was that you could send faster, you could send with less fatigue, and um, and so uh, the genesis of uh, of iambic keying, um, both. Iambic and, and single lever paddles are very common. Um, one is not better than the other. Um, and actually, um, I was talking to someone a couple of years ago who transitioned from an iambic paddle to a single level paddle, very accomplished CW operator. He was in his 70s. He developed some arthritis in his wrist, and he found that by virtue of going to a single lever paddle, he was able to send better. It was easier for him to send. Um, with a single lever paddle than it was um, the dexterity needed in order to do, and, and muscle memory that was needed to do the squeeze king. Um, and so I would, I would not venture to guess if one was more popular uh, than the other, uh, but they're both very accepted uh, methods of sending CW. Alrighty, excellent, Eric. Thank you, and again, thank you much for the presentation on CW. I know it's it's on my list of uh, I'd like to learn about it one day, it, you know, especially you know being a traffic handler. You know, you can go long distances in CW, especially when the the bands are interesting. I keep crossing my fingers. So thanks much <laughs> for joining us this well, morning. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, my uh, my dog is uh, is happy to be here too, <laughs> and uh, um, and also you know on thirty your traffic handler thirty five ten or th excuse me thirty five forty at ten p.m. Central Time um, they have a CW traffic net um, uh, in the Texas section in in the, in the Texas region. And, um, and every night, uh, every night of the week, those guys are on and uh, they're always looking for participants, check ins and so forth on 3540. Yeah, yes, please. <laughs> As a section traffic manager. Yes, please. <laughs> All right, again, Eric, thank you much again this morning. Uh, appreciate it much. Mm -hmm.